everyone, it's Sal here. Welcome back to another relaxing perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So in today's video, I'm going to be going through my entire designer perfume collection and I will follow up with um, a video all about my niche fragrance collection and also my kind of affordable celebrity perfumes as well. But I thought I would um, start things off just by going through all of my designer fragrances, just because basically um, most of my full collection is made up of designer perfumes. This is all of them here. Um, they actually all fit onto this wee coffee table, which is quite nice. It's nice to have them all in the one place, as opposed to scattered around the room. If you've been following my channel for a wee while, you might remember a few of my previous full collection videos where some were on this table and others were kind of around the room, you know, because they wouldn't all fit in one place, basically. Let me know how you guys are doing in the comments section below. Uh, it's always so nice to hear from you. Let me know if you have a drink of choice with you. Today I just have some, like a wee mug of some kind of warm water, really. I decided I didn't want tea or coffee, I just wanted some water to keep me hydrated throughout the video. And I think we'll just kind of start at the front here. So first up I have the gorgeous Mugler Aura and how beautiful is that emerald green bottle you guys. This is such an enchanting fragrance to me, it's quite inspiring actually. It's incredibly unique, let me know if you've tried this one and also let me know if you actually like it. I know this is a fragrance that not everybody likes. I, for one, love it. I think it's really, really feminine, powerful, unique, kind of captivating, and I just really, really enjoy it. Funnily enough, even though it's quite out there, I actually find this to be one of my easiest reaches, believe it or not, just because it's quite a versatile fragrance and I kind of feel like no matter what my mood, this fragrance feels comfortable. So some, some fragrances I feel like I have to be in the right mood to wear, but you know, no matter how I'm feeling, I can pretty much always rely on Mugler Aura, which I found to be quite unusual actually. This is one of the only fragrances that I really feel that way towards, if that makes sense. Um, so of course I really do love this one, you guys. I think it's stunning. I love the whole concept of it. I think it's incredibly creative. Um, inspiring, unique, innovative, and I just love not only the scents but the packaging and the advert behind it. I think it's all incredible. Um, it all comes together perfectly and I just love this one. Um, and that is the gorgeous Mugler Aura. <laughs> I'm gonna try and not spend that long on every fragrance, otherwise we might be here for a wee while. Um, next we have my beautiful Alien Eau de Parfum from Mugler. And I feel like this year I've really properly discovered this one, if that makes sense. I'm pretty sure I purchased this one last year, but it was only really this year that I got some good use out of it and I kind of got to know the fragrance properly, if you know what I mean. Alien was never a fragrance that I felt super comfortable just reaching for. It's kind of one of those fragrances that I was almost a little bit not intimidated by, but it's just quite a power a powerful fragrance, you know, and I felt like I was always waiting for the right kind of occasion to actually wear it. But these days I've been wearing this one a lot more often and I think it's a really stunning one, you guys. I mean, as far as jasmine fragrances go, I think this is the best one I've tried to date. It really has that um, gorgeous, alluring, addicting quality to it, instantly recognisable. You know, it has that very signature... Um, recognizable, iconic kind of scent profile to it. And I just absolutely love it. I've been playing around with this one quite a lot, actually, just in the last few weeks, layering it with some other fragrances. I have mentioned in a few of my videos, I think, just the layering combinations that I'd kind of discovered. And um, this is just a fragrance I've been having a lot of fun with, wearing on its own and layering it with other ones. I will leave a card to that video up here and I'll leave a link to it below, just in case you're wondering what the combinations were. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love this one. I think it's incredible. 
Um, I don't really mind the fact that I have this small 30ml bottle because I, I'm aware that I can just refill it, which is kind of a relief to be honest. Um, so I don't need to really worry about using up my 30ml. I do also have the perfume pen version of this as well. So that is the stunning Alien Eau de Parfum from Mugler, a perfume that I didn't find super easy to wear at first, but it's certainly grown on me and I'm wearing it more often now. Next up today, we have this stunning fragrance right here, Alien Fusion. And if I had to say which one I preferred between Alien Fusion and the original Alien, that would be kind of a tough call, to be honest with you. I mean, I would maybe still stick with the original Alien if I had to pick between the two, but this one comes very, very close, you guys. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. In particular, I love layering this with the original Alien. It's one of my favorite layering combinations. Um, they mesh incredibly well together, as you would kind of expect, because they're from the same line. But this is a really nice, um, smoother, sweeter version that's kind of like very balsamic, but overall I find this one to be kind of easier to wear than the original Alien. And I do find actually that if you found the original Alien a bit too much, but you, but you really wanted to get on board with an Alien, I would recommend trying this one or the Eau de Toilette version because they're both easier to wear than the Eau de Parfum in my opinion. But this one is absolutely stunning, you guys. I, I always love how this looks in videos. I think it looks absolutely incredible. Very dramatic bottle, very, very eye-catching. Uh, it makes a statement. And overall, out of all of the perfumes in my collection, I would say this is one of the most sensual and seductive, like femme fatale type of scents. It really, it's very empowering to wear this. It's just extremely alluring and I really do love it. So that's Alien Fusion. Next, we have the last Alien in my collection and that is Alien Eau de Toilette. And I really do think this is a nice one to start with, actually. If you um, are not familiar with the Alien line at all and you're kind of wondering where to start, I would start with this one because this was actually the first one I purchased from the whole Alien line. And it's the one that helped me um, get on board with it and ultimately helped me to fall in love with the Eau de Parfum version, if that makes any sense. This is basically a lighter, more light-hearted, casual, easy-to-wear version of it, with more emphasis on the citrus notes, less emphasis on the amber and the woody notes, and overall it's just kind of lighter, but it doesn't lose that alien magic, if you know what I mean. It's still very true to the alien line. Um, but this one, I just think it's an easier-to-wear version, you guys, and I really do think it's kind of all thanks to this one that I even got into the alien line. To be honest with you, my first impression of the alien Eau de Parfum was like not great. I actually didn't like that one at all, but I decided to give this one a go just because why not, you know? And it's through this fragrance that I then fell in love with the other aliens, if you know if you know where I'm coming from. Um, let me know if that's happened to you, you know, if you maybe didn't get on with a particular fragrance at first, but then you tried another one from the line and then that helped you fall in love with the other ones. <laughs> Let me know if that's ever happened to you, you guys, um, but that's certainly what happened to me. Would really recommend this. I think this is a perfect signature scent for all year round, any season, any occasion. Very, very feminine and alluring still, but just more lighthearted than the original. And that is Alien Eau de Toilette from Mugler. And last up from the Mugler house, we have the beautiful Angel Eau de Toilette from Mugler and look how beautiful that bottle is you guys, it's so cute. There's something I really like about this um, packaging and this is one of the stars that actually stands up as opposed to the, uh, the ones that lie down. This is such a nice fluffy, sweet, feminine, light and airy type of scent that still has a lot of substance to it so it's not really a light scent but it's light and airy in the feel but it still has like a lot of um, substance, like I say. It's really stunning, not as heavy and intense as the original Eau de Parfum. The patchouli is definitely toned down in this one and it has some stunning fruity nuances um, and also a kind of cocoa, like powdered cocoa sort of feel to it. 
it's really unusual. I really like this one. It's a relatively new addition to my collection and it's the newest one out of all of my Mugglers actually. Um, very successful addition into my collection. I've been thoroughly enjoying this one and that is Mugler Angel Eau de Toilette. I'll also briefly mention the Angel Hair Mist that I have. I purchased them kind of at the same time and I do really, really like this. Sometimes hair mists can be a bit naff. I mean, I've come across like one or two that weren't like the best. This is such a good hair mist, you guys. Definitely check it out if you're a fan of um, Angel. It smells like Angel and it lasts a really nice length of time. I think hair mists can be quite nice from the point of view of being like less damaging to your hair. They're not gonna be quite as drying um, compared with like spraying just a full on fragrance onto your hair. So like it's a little bit better for your hair and this one in particular is actually really good. So yeah, I'd really recommend this Mugler Angel hair mist to go with like any of the angels from the line really. Oops. So those are all of my Mugler fragrances that I have and I think next up I will move on to my Yves Saint Laurent perfumes. I've actually got one, I'm going to move this one over so I don't forget to mention it with my other ones. I'll move that one over there as well. My Armani perfumes. Okay, so my Yves Saint Laurent fragrances, um, I have three black opium scents. I have the two I have two versions of the original actually so I'll show you those first. Um, oh no that's the intense. So this is my original black opium. <laughs> As you can see I've worn this one quite a lot. I'm quite shocked by that. I feel like it's gone down very quickly all of a sudden. I mean I have been wearing it but I'm wondering if I don't know if some of that's evaporated or if I've genuinely just been using it so so often. I feel like I've just used a lot of it. So that's my Black Opium Eau de Parfum. This is the same fragrance again but in the limited edition. I think they called it the Baby Cat Collector, this bottle. I just had to have it you guys, how cute is that? Um, yeah I really really like this packaging, I think it's really really pretty quite photogenic um, and and I kind of the thing is I knew I would need to repurchase this fragrance anyway like I knew that because of the rate I was going through the original so I thought why not purchase it in the nice packaging you know so that I don't have two bottles that are just identical so that's just black opium eau de parfum then of course I have the Black Opium Intense, which, oh my gosh, you can really see how blue this bottle is when I hold it up to the window there. I'm quite glad about that because sometimes when I show it in my videos um, with my regular setup, you can't actually see how blue the bottle is because of the way that my lights usually are. But because we have some backlighting today, you can really see that. How pretty is that, you guys? But I really do like this fragrance. It's quite different from the original. I think it's a really worthwhile um, addition to the line just because of how different it is. It's a bit more mature, it's a bit more um, elevated, better blended, kind of there's more going on in here and things like that. But I would say like overall I gravitate more towards the original just because that one's a little bit more easy to wear. This one like I say it has more of an elevated feeling to it so I'm less inclined to just like grab it and spray it when I'm on my way out if that makes sense. Um, I do like my easy reach scents, that's for sure. But this is a really nice one nonetheless, and that is Black Opium Intense from YSL. I do also have this Black Opium Hair Mist, and I would say, although I do enjoy it, this is one of those examples of a hair mist that's not the best that you can get, if you know what I mean. This one, smells quite like diluted to me and it's kind of like there's something in here that doesn't quite smell 
like the original black opium. I mean, it's meant to just smell like black opium eau de parfum, but there's something in here that's maybe slightly diluted or there's something in here almost reminiscent of like hairspray. Like it's not spot on and I don't know, it's kind of slightly different from the original. It's really nice, like I'm glad I have it and I like to layer this, like I spray this in my hair if I remember when I'm wearing the other ones, the black opiums, but overall um, I would definitely say that the angel hair mist that I mentioned, that's much better. That smells more like just angel, whereas this one is like a bit more diluted but it's still kind of nice to have, I suppose. But that's my Black Opium Hair Mist. And uh, my last fragrance from the YSL house is Libra Intense here in this stunning bottle. How gorgeous is that, you guys? I mean, this has to be up there with one of the most elevated, classy looking bottles I have in my collection. And that amber juice is absolutely stunning absolutely beautiful you guys i really love this one um this is definitely my favorite out of the libra line i actually wasn't a fan of the original libra and i haven't tried the eau de toilette version yet i am really happy with this one i think it's a stunning lavender um lavender kind of fragrance i believe it has notes of orchid ambergris orange blossom maybe even patchouli it's kind of a richer deeper mood than the original Libra. But to me, this still has some kind of fresh aspects just from the, like the lavender notes. And I don't know, I just, I much prefer this. I think it's more of a complete fragrance and it doesn't have that kind of harsh, like harsh quality to it that I found in the original. So yeah, I really like this one. Um, I've worn a fair bit. Actually, there's not much of a dent in here, but I have definitely worn this quite a lot. It's just not really much of a dent. I would have expected there to be more of a dent than that. Although I suppose it looks like there's more if I turn it that way. More out of it, I mean. Anyway, I really like this one, you guys. It's fantastic. And that's YSL's Libra Intense. Next we have Chloe Lowe. This is actually the only Chloe fragrance I now own. I used to have quite a few from the line, if you maybe remember from some of my older videos. Um, it's kind of a shame actually, because the Chloe scents are really good. I just didn't really get on well with, um, you know, the other ones like after a while. So I used to own Love Story. I used to own the original Chloe. I used to own Rose to Chloe. And I think that was it actually, but I decided to keep this one because of how light and kind of calming and aquatic it is. I think it's perfect for the summer. It's perfect for when I have a headache, actually. This is really nice and soothing and kind of calming. That lid is a little bit worse for wear, but it's a really pretty bottle, really pretty scent, very feminine. Just lighthearted, easy to wear, just nice and fresh as well, and very uplifting. And that's Chloe Lowe Eau de Toilette. Next up we have Ellie Sab's Girl of Now, and this is a fragrance that I have talked about quite a lot on my channel. Um, I think this is one that gets spoken about quite a lot in general, just like on YouTube and things like that. It is quite a good one though. Um, it's one that I considered decluttering before, funnily enough, just because of how sweet it is. And I, I do kind of have to be in the mood for it, but at one point I found it like a little bit nauseating just because of the level of sweetness in here. It is very, very sweet. Um, but I kind of persevered with it and I'm really glad that I kept it in the end because it's a stunning one. I really, I love layering this with my Alien. That was actually a suggestion from one of my subscribers, I believe it was Summer Dew, um, if I'm remembering correct, they actually suggested that layering combination to me a while back and it smells, they mentioned that it would smell quite similar to Alien Essence Absolute and they were totally spot on. So I love layering this with my Alien and I, to be honest, it kind of makes it a bit more palatable for me, like if I'm not in the mood for such a syrupy sweet fragrance. Layering this with Alien kind of like balances that out um, and they like add an interesting dimension to each other. So that's uh, Girl of Now from Ellie Saab, my only Ellie Saab fragrance in my collection. 
Next, I think I'll go to my Givenchy fragrances right here. I have three from Givenchy. Um, first of all, I'll start off with my favourite, and that is Lintrudy Intense. This fragrance is incredible, you guys. I'm kind of annoyed that I only purchased the 35ml. I definitely wish I'd sized up because this is a stunning, stunning fragrance. Um, let me know what you think of this one. Let me know which one is your favourite from the line. I know a lot of people like the Rouge, and I do like the Rouge. I actually prefer the Rouge to the original, and I own the original and I do not own the Rouge. The reason I didn't purchase Rouge is kind of because, to me, it's almost too... I mean, it's very different from the original, but just I couldn't justify purchasing that as well as having the original and the Intense if that makes sense. I just couldn't justify it right now. Although I do definitely prefer the Rouge over the original. Um, this one is stunning. It's a creamy, like, creamy, vanillic, slightly unusual version of the original. It's definitely less sharp. Um, they've kind of taken away all of the sharpness. And um, there's an interesting note of sesame in here, interesting note of black pepper. And to me, it's really the um, vanilla and tube rose that shines. It, those two notes together create a very nice creamy accord. And overall, this is absolutely stunning, you guys. I really love it. It's kind of been one of my most worn fragrances of the winter, actually. And it's completely stunning. So that's Lintrudy Intense from Givenchy. Next up, of course, we have the original that I actually have in this bigger bottle, which is kind of annoying because... <laughs> I wish I had the Intense in the bigger bottle and this one in the smaller one. This is a stunning fragrance. It lasts a really long time. It's very recognisable. It's very unique. I, I do really like it, but there's something about this that doesn't always resonate with me, you guys. It's quite a sharp fragrance. It has a lot of attitude about it and it's quite bossy. And uh, for me, I like wearing this to work because it can kind of like give me some confidence to be honest like it has that very confident nature about it so I do like it for work but overall I have to kind of brace myself to wear this because of how strong it is it lasts like all day completely like by the end of the day this one is still projecting it really has that power to it and I have to kind of be in the mood for that if that makes sense um it's very strong very nice but I kind of have to be in the mood for it um and that's uh, Lintrudy Eau de Parfum from Givenchy. Next we have Dahlia Devin Le Nectar Intense, also from Givenchy. And this is a stunning fragrance, um, a nice fuzzy yellow floral, vanillic woody type of scent. Um, really, really nice. But again, I would say I have to be kind of in the mood for it. It's quite intense, very long lasting, um, but still has kind of a soft, diffused kind of nature to it. This one is overall a very nice, classy, elegant, and uh, mature leaning fragrance. That is Dahlia Devin Le Nectar Intense from Givenchy. Next we have my Dior fragrances. Um, oh, where's the front of this? There we go. We have Hypnotic Poison from Dior, the Eau de Toilette version. Um, as you might be able to see, I've worn quite a lot of this one. This is a really nice, easy to wear almond vanilla scent. I really do enjoy it. Um, I've had this one for a wee while in my collection now. Perfect for the kind of autumn and winter, very cozy and comforting. Then we have the Eau de Parfum version, <laughs> there we go, which is in this stunning bottle here. I absolutely love this packaging, you guys. I think it's very vampire-esque, kind of gothic looking, very moody, and I really do like that. Um, but this fragrance, it looks like it maybe has a little bit of a dent in there, but overall I don't really reach for this one too often, kind of because it's spicier and it's a bit more serious than the Eau de Toilette and I kind of have to be in the right mood to wear it, but it's a stunning fragrance nonetheless. Then we have Poison Girl Eau de Parfum from Dior. This is a stunning scent. I've had this one for the longest time out of all three of my poisons. Um, I think I purchased this one around two years ago 
and it's it's a really stunning sweet powdery nutty kind of fragrance really nice and vanillic as well kind of balsamic very unusual to me um very prominent with the orange blossom as well to me this is quite a complex scent actually and the dry down is heavenly it's not one that i've been reaching for an awful lot lately um i think that's mostly because of how sweet it is really i, I kind of have to be in the right mood for this one nowadays just because of how sweet it is but it is it's one of my classics like it's still a favorite just because I've had it for so long and I would say maybe I don't quite enjoy it as much now as I used to. I used to be absolutely head over heels for this one and I would wear it more but these days I don't wear it quite as often although I do still really like enjoy it. So that's Poison Girl Eau de Parfum from Dior. I think I'll move over to this tray now um, to some of my Longcom fragrances here. So we have, uh, La uh, not La Via Belle, <laughs> we have Lanry Tresor Nude Eau de Toilette, I believe this one is, and it's a really nice beachy fragrance. Um, this is kind of, I feel like this is all I really need when it comes to coconutty, beachy type of scents. I know there are many others out there, like there's the La Via Belle Salai, Salai Cristal, which I wasn't a fan of, and there are... Um, you know, Bronze Goddess, I believe. I mean, there's quite a few different fragrances out there with this kind of vibe, but to me, this is like the only one I need. It's kind of perfect, really. Um, the note composition is quite simple from what I can recall. I believe there's bergamot, there's um, rose essence, there is vanilla, coconut, and is that it? I think that might even be it. Perhaps there's pink pepper. I can't quite remember. I think that's kind of it though. Um, it's a really nice, sweet, lighthearted, feel good fragrance, perfect for the summer and uh, just for beachy days out to the beach. That's certainly where I wore it during the summer there. It's a lot of my beach outings and it was really perfect for that. So that is um, Lanry Tresor Nude Eau de Toilette from Longcom. And then we have my beloved Lanry Tresor Alifolie, which is a, an old favourite in my collection. It's one that I've talked about a lot. I've reviewed this one many times and it is really a stunning one, you guys. It's very unique, but it's still very like likeable, crowd-pleasing, feminine, flirty, alluring. You know, it's absolutely stunning, you guys. Overall, this fragrance, kind of to sum up, it reminds me of a mixture of Christmas baking and also mulled wine. So as you can imagine, it's perfect for this time of year. Uh, very cozy and very comforting indeed. I also absolutely love the bottle. It is stunning. And then we have Lanry Tresor Eau de Parfum, the original. And I do really like this one as well. This is more of my kind of like night out, dressy type of scents. Um, I do enjoy wearing this one when I go out for drinks. If I'm um, a bit more dressed up, like I say, that's the type of situation where I enjoy wearing this one. It's not really like a day-to-day -day fragrance. Although to be fair, in the colder weather, you could get away with wearing this one day-to-day. -day. But just for me personally, like the emotion that this one evokes to me, it's more for like evenings out and I, I really love it, you guys. I think it's such a stunning, unique fragrance. Very, very feminine, very dark, mysterious, and seductive. Then we have my Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. I'm just gonna lift this one up with this gorgeous, look at that juice, you guys, oh my gosh. Now, this is a fragrance that I'm kind of not struggling with. I'm not gonna go that far and say that, but it's a fragrance that has kind of taken me by surprise a little bit recently. When I first purchased this, I loved it and I wore it kind of all the time. But more recently, I've kind of like not been as keen for it just because of the level of sweetness in here. It has that syrupy vibe. There's also quite a strong fruity accord in here that I can struggle with sometimes. Um, so I've not really been wearing it as often as I, as I would have liked to, like considering that we're into winter at the moment. And I kind of thought that winter would have been my ideal time to wear this and I kind of haven't really been doing that so that's been kind of interesting um 
I'll be kind of interested to see where things go with this one in the future. Um, I'd like to kind of rekindle my love for it, but at the moment it's not really been a favourite, so that's the only one from Dolce & Gabbana. And we have my gorgeous Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme, which is a solid classic in my collection. It's one that I really love. I've talked about this one quite a lot. It is stunning, you guys. It's really got that kind of mysterious, magnetic, alluring quality to it. A certain je ne sais quoi, you know, and it's just absolutely stunning. I'm not going to do a full review, otherwise we will be here forever. <laughs> um, but I just love this one. It's kind of a softly spicy vanillic type of scent with a lot of um, intrigue about it, a lot of nice woody notes and a little bit of ginger as well to add some spice. So I love this one. I think it's perfect for the autumn and winter for sure. And moving on, what have we got left? So I'll talk about my Armani fragrances, I think. So we have Armani's My Way, which is such a solid classic in my collection at this point. It kind of, this is one that really took me by surprise as well, because when I first tried it, I was like slightly underwhelmed by it, but it definitely grew on me and now I absolutely love it. Um, I've not been wearing it recently because we are into the winter and for me personally, this is more of like a springtime scent. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this one more in the spring months that are gonna be coming up very soon. Just such a nice, bright, happy, like uplifting, vanillic, tuberose, orange blossom type of scent with a beautiful kind of sparkly bergamot opening. So good, you guys. Extremely feminine and uplifting. Then we have C. Fiori, also from Armani. And this is the only C from the C line that I now own. I used to own the original C. That was my signature scent for a while, actually. Um, I no longer own that one, though. And I do really like this one. This is one of those fragrances that had to kind of grow on me, to be honest, because when I first purchased it, I found it to be like a little bit on the sweeter side for me. And because of the sweetness in there, I kind of had to be in the right mood for it. And sometimes it would be like a bit too much. But, you know, these days I enjoy it more. It's definitely a fragrance that's grown on me. I do really like it now. It kind of reminds me of like a puffy marshmallow. <laughs> and um, it's just really nice. So that's C. Fiori from Armani. Um, next up, I think I'll go through my Guerlain fragrance collection. So first up, we have the stunning Mon Guerlain Intense, and I really do feel like, let me know what you think, but to me, this one is kind of taking the fragrance uh, community by storm. I've really noticed recently how many people have been talking about this one and I'm so glad about it to be honest because I really do feel that it, this one like deserves all of the hype. It's a really stunning fragrance. Um, I purchased this one quite a long time ago, like over two years ago and honestly it's just gone from strength to strength in my collection. Um, when I first purchased it I liked it but I didn't fully appreciate it and I would say now I appreciate it a lot more and I just, I absolutely love this one, you guys. I think it's really incredible. Such a gorgeous version of Mongrelan. I mean, really, this is so elevated, so, so sensual, classy, versatile, feminine, slightly mature, sophisticated, just absolutely stunning, you guys, honestly. Um, and I'm so glad that more people seem to be talking about this. Like I do see this one like popping up here and there just on YouTube and Instagram and things like that. And I do really think it's very well deserved. So that is Mongrelan Intense, a very sensual, alluring, woody, aromatic, vanillic fragrance. Then of course we have the original Mongrelan, which I do still love, but I would say like I prefer the intense one like more. But this is still an absolutely stunning fragrance. It's actually my scent of the day today. And it's a really nice, like easy reach scent, you guys. It's so easy to wear this one. Very cozy and comforting, hence why I'm wearing it today, actually. Um, and I, I really do enjoy this one. Very classical, very versatile, very, very feminine. You could wear this like anywhere 
whether it's a job interview or a date or out with friends, it wouldn't really matter. This is kind of that perfect um, signature scent worthy type of scents. Very feminine indeed and very classy. And then we have Mongreland Sparkling Bouquet and I'm actually really glad I still have this one in my collection because this was in a declutter category a while back. I, for some reason, just wanted to get rid of this one. It wasn't inspiring me enough. It was kind of too light and things like that. Um, and I was kind of bored with it. So I kind of, I was very close to actually getting rid of this one, but I'm really glad I kept it. I do really enjoy this. It's such a nice, light, easygoing scent. On those, perfect for those days when either of the other Mongerlands would be like a bit too heavy or a bit too much. This is just such a nice, casual, like clean, brighter version. Um, just extremely easygoing, you know, you could just spritz this on in the morning when you're popping out to the shops or if you just want to kind of like freshen up. This is one of those perfect fragrances. Just like kind of a staple scent. Yeah, it's kind of a lighter, brighter, more easygoing version compared with the other Mongerlands. Very nice and feminine. Just quite easy to like, in my opinion. It has that nice um, peony, sandalwood, pear, lavender and vanilla, of course. I'm just trying to remember what else is in here. There's also white musk in here, I believe. Um, overall, it's just a very pleasant, aromatic, fruity, floral type of scent. And we're getting close to the end now, you guys. <laughs> we have my three Narciso fragrances there and um, this one from Versace. I'll just, I'll talk about this one first. So this is Versace Crystal Noir Eau de Toilette. And this is a really nice one, very like dark and mysterious, but still kind of light, you know, like it has a dark, mysterious mood to it without actually being like heavy or smoky or anything like that. Like it's still overall kind of light. Um, now this one reminds me of like luxurious, maybe shower gel kind of products. There's a kind of soapiness to this as well. It's overall quite complex, I would say. Like there's quite a lot to this. Um, there's also a really interesting, like dark fruitiness in here. I believe that's from a fig note if I'm remembering correct. Um, there's a sandalwood, like a creamy sandalwood note in here with tuberose and like there's quite a lot going on. Like I say, I can't really remember off the top of my head, but um, it's a really, really good fragrance. You know, you can purchase this one quite for quite an affordable price from what I can remember. It's really good, really unique, very, very sensual, seductive, um, but also quite versatile. For me personally, I enjoy wearing this one kind of um, like out the shower or out the bath of an evening. It kind of like, it has a very calming effect and it smells kind of clean as well, just because of that luxurious, like soapy shower gel bath body care product vibe that this one kind of has. So that's when I really enjoy wearing this one personally. Um, and it's a really nice one. So that's Versace Crystal Noir Eau de Toilette. And to finish up today, we have my three beautiful Narciso Rodriguez fragrances. We have Narciso the White Cube, we have Narciso Poudre, and of course Narciso Rodriguez for her Eau de Toilette. I'm just gonna move this one out the way so we can kind of see them better. So these fragrances are all stunning. I actually get quite good use out of all of them. I would say my most worn is gonna be Narciso Poudre or the white cube, they're kind of very easy reaches for me. I also love this one, but to me that's more of like a sensual mood, so I would maybe be more inclined to wear that one for like a date night or if I'm going out of an evening, that type of thing. So these are the three from this house that I own. I kind of want to try Musk Noir again. I have briefly tried that one and I thought it was really nice, but I kind of want to go back and try it again and see if it's one that I'll be adding into my collection as well. Um, I also kind of want to try, what's the other one that I want to try? I think Narciso for her Eau de Parfum. I kind of want to give that one a try as well. Um, I used to own Narciso Rouge and Ambre, but they were moved on to a new home because I wasn't like too keen on them in the end. 
um, but these are the three that I own from this house and I absolutely love all three of them. So there we have it you guys, that is my entire designer perfume collection, there's certainly, <laughs> there's certainly a fair few to get through there. I really hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy the video and you'd like to see more from me, then don't forget to click the wee subscribe button below and click the little thumbs up as well to let me know if you enjoyed it. Um, thanks again for watching, I look forward to chatting with you guys in the comments and until next time, take care, bye!